so what we're looking at now is sort of this paradigm shift to high intensity gait training, where we're seeing multiple studies coming out that point to not only the feasibility and the efficacy of implementing high intensity gait training, um, but really on the levels of neuroplasticity, we're seeing actual changes in a person's individual gait outcomes afterwards. So why is intensity so important? Um, this intensity is really essential for walking recovery. Um, it increases oxygen delivery at aerobic capacity, which in turn leads to improved force generation. So they're seeing this carryover between improved cardiovascular fitness and actual improvements in strength. What I think is important to consider is that the definition of intensity can vary. Um, so for something like locomotor training, we're defining intensity as the amount of work per unit time. Um, whereas in sort of more upper extremity rehabilitation, something like constraint induced therapy, we're looking at more purely as the number of reps. And what's key with high intensity gait training and really high intensity training in general is that we need to switch up our variables. We need to change the amplitude of individuals movements. We need to change the speed that people are moving. We can add weight, we can add resistance, all of these things um, to really switch things up and consistently change challenge the patient. So when we're talking about targeting intensity within the clinic, really the goal should be to achieve 60 to 80% of max heart rate during interventions. And while we're doing this, we want to maximize the number of steps that the patient takes prior to requiring a rest break. And I think that is actually one of the biggest shifts, particularly in the inpatient model of care. Um, I think we're very much inclined to offer too many rest breaks. And when we offer rest breaks, patients pretty much always take them. Um, but what we've been finding is that if we don't offer it, patients aren't asking. And from, you know, monitoring their vitals throughout a session, we're seeing that they don't actually need all of those rest breaks. Um, and I think it's one of those situations where particularly when you're supposed to be doing point of service documentation, we give rest breaks so that we can document. A lot of times it's not like, oh, you look so tired, you need a rest. It's, I have eight notes that I have to write. So let me get a little bit done while you take your rest break. Um, and that really minimizes the overall challenge that the patient is getting throughout each session. It minimizes the number of steps that they're able to take. Um, and it prevents us from really consistently challenging them. This has been a highlighted clip from Rewalk's Topics in Neuro Rehabilitation web series. To watch the full episode, please go to the Rewalk Robotics YouTube page or visit the link in the comments below. See you next time.